Welcome to the Korach edition of the short board. In this week's parsha, it starts off by Yikach Korach, and Korach took. So Rashi says, Parsha ze yafa nidreshes b'medrish tanchuma. That this parsha is better studied with the medrish tanchuma. Now we have a rule that you're not supposed to say that that halacha zu noeh, halacha zu This halacha is nice and this halacha is not nice. Uh, you can't say them together because obviously you can't say that some halacha is not nice. So the lesson must be to tell us that even something that is nice, you can't say halacha zu noeh because that would be implying that other halachos might not be so nice. So why would Rashi excuse the word yafa in his explanation that parsha ze yafa nidreshes? So vayikach korach, what did Korach take? There's no clear answer to that. And most times we have, uh, in, a, in a Pasuk, we have Pshat, and then we have Drash, and we have Sod, we have different explanations, but you start off with a Pshat. But here, there's no Pshat that he physically took anything. So therefore, if we think now, now it makes sense that Rashi says, Yafa, Parsha Zud Yafa Nidreshes, because, it, because this is a Parsha that there is no Pshat. In effect, the Medrash itself becomes the Pshat. And it also says, Vayikach Korach, and Korach took, so Rashi says, Korach, she pikeach haya, he was a wise man, ma'ra l'shtus zu, what did he see that he did this foolishness? So it's interesting, why would the Pasuk use the words foolishness? Uh, why would Chazal use such a language for this action? So we can better understand this by using the Gemara and Brachos, which explains that when Rabbi Gamliel was deposed as the Nasi, uh, because of the incident with Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua, so when they were looking for someone to become Nasi instead of Rabbi Gamliel, one of the people eliminated automatically was Rabbi Yeshua because it would look like he instigated the whole situation just to become the Nasi. So that makes sense here also that by applying this lesson we would say that Korach was making a big mistake because if he was making a public argument against Moshe Rabbeinu, that would effectively eliminate himself from replacing him. So he would get nothing out of it and therefore the Chacham called it a shtus. But if Korach was Pikeach, he was a wise man. So why would Korach, why would Korach want to uh, use this? So he saw that he had a shalshelas, a chain of godless, of greatness that came in his future from his descendants. So this was his plan, not for himself, but because he knew he wouldn't be able to get it anymore. But he had to disrupt Moshe from being able to yorish it to the uh, his children, and therefore he had to get rid of Moshe now, so that his the, the Korach's children would have an opportunity. And Korach's children were great. You had Shmuel Hanavi, who was a descendant of Korach, and you had Lamnatech Mizmola Korach, and, uh, that we say on Monday mornings at the end of Davani, the Shir Shil Yom. So Korach, he had le- he malakach lekach raleatzmo. He took some bad deal for himself, yes, bad for himself, but good for his descendants. And continuing in this thought, we have that uh, in the story of Hana when she was praying for a child, Hana was praying that. It would be someone who would be lo chacham not too smart, not too dumb. Now I understand why we want someone not to be dumb, but why would we not not want him to be too smart? So the answer is that Hana actually was a descendant of Korach, and because of what happened, because Korach was so smart that he outsmarted himself in his rebellion, so he ended up losing out. So therefore, for her, it was better that lo chacham not too smart, but not too dumb. Have a wonderful week, and enjoy the parsha.